It's day 5 in the Les Voiles de Saint-Tropez, and we see to the future of long-distance maxi racing. It's the Mark Mills designed, foiling, mini maxi, flying Nika. It goes upwind at 20 knots, and down at 30 knots. It's a weapon. The owner is Roberto Lacorte, and he is no ordinary owner. He's vice president of the International Maxi Association. He is the founder of the popular 151 Miglia Regatta, and a hugely successful owner-driver, with a string of high-profile victories to his name, including the inaugural season's trophy in the foiling, the Seco F69, one design. Pourquoi ce bateau Ça c'est une belle question. Roberto, Robert Lacorte, il a décidé euh, de faire les prochains bateaux, il doit être un bateau de course, un bateau régate sans compromis, euh, seulement pour la vitesse. Nous avons vu qu'il y a les foils dans l'océan, dans les Imoca, dans la Coupe de l'Amérique. Pourquoi on pas on peut faire des foils pour faire des régates traditionnelles en Méditerranée il a appelé Marc Mills, il a dit « ça c'est ce que je veux, c'est un, un pari, mais c'est ça ce que je veux faire dans, dans ma vie sportive prochaine. » En fait, Roberto, notre propriétaire, il barre les bateaux. Nous ne sommes pas d'un équipage qui a fait la Coupe de l'Amérique, nous ne sommes pas, comment dire, champions du monde de foiling, mais barreur, c'est la part plus facile de, 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 de toute la gestion du bateau. La part plus compliquée, c'est le réglage des voiles et le réglage de la part euh, dans l'eau, de l'hydrofoil. Il y a beaucoup de choses à configurer pendant le vol, le pitch, la quantité de euh, redressement du bateau. Les, on n'a pas constamment les mêmes pressions du vent sur les voiles, alors il faut rajouter et régler les voiles, mais aussi la part qui, qui reste dans l'eau, que c'est la plus compliquée à gérer, parce que euh, c'est clair que c'est la plus importante quand vous marchez à vitesse presque 30 nœuds. This is the weekly Sailing World on Water, for October 14, 2022. We feature highlights of the sport released in the last seven days. Where do you start in learning how to sail such a cutting-edge and high-performance yacht? A good place is this How to Sail the AC40 video with Emirates Team New Zealand helmsman Nathan Outridge. So the AC40 is, you know, an incredibly complicated boat, but to make it simple and easy as possible to sail for the Youth America's Cup and Women's America's Cup, the systems on board have been designed so that it's actually quite an easy boat to sail despite how complex it is. One of the things that makes the boat so easy to sail is the autopilot. So there's a simple button here on the left hand side which you can just switch the boat into autopilot mode and then effectively for flying the boat you've got two real inputs. You can either adjust the height at which the boat sails or how much foil you have in the water with a simple plus and minus and then there's the trim so you can change the attitude of the boat. More bow down, more bow up and so you know for someone like myself who has a lot of foiling experience but never sailed a boat like this it's been pretty easy through the commissioning just with the way that the, the autopilot software works. So then the other uh, panel of buttons here is all to do with the boards up and down system. So you've got a board up button and a board down button. You can also do a plus and minus on the cant system. So effectively from this seat here, you can do all the functions you need for, for flying the boat. So the AC40 start with four people. You've got two people on each side. As you can see, I'm in a bucket seat here and we've got another one at the back. I'm almost sitting on the floor, so you're incredibly low and out of the wind, and it's the same configuration on the other side. And then the aero trimmer sits behind you, and they've got controls for the mainsail and the jib at the back of the boat. 
So one of the cool things about this is you can choose if you want to trim the mainsail or the jib because every time you tack and jibe, you know, the way the boat's been designed and that the mainsail trimmer will be sitting on the windward side and the jib trimmer will probably be sitting to leeward because they have a much better view of the jib. So a simple button press will switch you from main functions to jib functions. And then you've got a bunch of push buttons. So you've got Cunningham control, the clue position. So you've got the car that slides on the clue. So you're basically creating more depth in the sail or making the sail flatter. When you tack and jibe, um, obviously the mast needs to rotate. So a button actually lights up it turns purple and you push that button and it rotates the mast. So there's a lot of software that's been developed in the background to stop you basically doing any damage to these boats. So, you know, if you're overpowered, you can just hold your finger on the Cunningham, you pump it super hard, it hits a pressure relief, the lights up and says you're at max load and you can take your finger off the button. So effectively, you can just focus on how much power you want upstairs on the sails and, and what kind of heel you want. And so you got one hand on a joystick, doing your heel control and then your other fingers are doing you know your, your standard Cunninghams and outdoor setups. An impressive international fleet of over 100 registered yachts from 25 countries are set to contest the 43rd edition of the renowned Rolex Middle Sea Race. This year also marks 20 years of the partnership between Rolex, the race, and its organizers the Royal Malta Yacht Club. Uniting spellbinding scenery, a complex race course, and an international fleet, the Rolex Middle Sea Race is undeniably one of the world's great offshore races. First held in 1968, this is a contest steeped in tradition, with its own distinct character. Located at the crossroads of the Mediterranean, starting and finishing against the impressive backdrop of Malta's capital Valletta, it comprises one of the most breathtaking and challenging racetracks. 606 nautical miles around Sicily, and its myriad of outlying islands, narrow straits, two active volcanoes, open water passages, fluctuating and changeable conditions. This race has it all. Tactically, the race breaks down into identifiable segments, with each one exposing the crews to contrasting weather and sea states. Determination, flawless teamwork, and sharp decision-making are essential. This year marks 20 years of the partnership between race organizers, the Royal Malta Yacht Club, and long-standing title sponsor Rolex. Careful curation has seen the fleet increase in size and stature, as each year more and more sailors participate, widening the appeal. This year, an impressive fleet is set to add another memorable chapter to the race's history, with the winner securing their part in the growing legend. The 43rd edition of the Rolex Middle Sea Race commences on October 22nd. Doug Devo's Quantum Racing won the Royal Cup 52 Super Series, Scarlino title in Tuscany, Italy, their third regatta triumph of the five event, 2022, 52 Super Series season. They overturned a one-point deficit to triumph by five clear points ahead of Takashi Okura's sled, and now carry a five-points lead going into the 2022 season big finale in Barcelona in three weeks' time. For the fourth regatta of the five-event 2022 season, the 52 Super Series returns to beautiful Tuscany and to the Marina de Scarlino. At stake is the historic Royal Cup. After a five-year break, the return to Scarlino in Tuscany is a popular one. Ashore, there is great local food and wine to be enjoyed, and on the water, well, it's a challenging, dynamic and interesting race area. Important crew changes and the different lineups see the underperforming platoon of Harm Muller Spear bring in three times title winning tactician Vasco Vascotto. 
Honestly, I never expected to sail with him in one boat because we had so many shit fights in the in the past on the water against each other. But after we have been a few days in the boat together, it's working fine. What we suppose we fight a lot in the past. The reality is that we have a good relationship. Let's prove that we are tough enough in the water to deserve some good results. Andy Soriano's Allegri recruits a young blood double Olympic medalist, Will Ryan. I did want to bring some young young people into the group after some evaluation we felt that will was the right guy so nick chose will and gave him the nod we have to balance my age with a with a younger guard <laughs> yeah i'm really lucky obviously stepping into an experienced team and nick trained them well beforehand i'm very quiet on the boat and nick's really good at just kind of leading the team so i think we, we work well together in that respect and quantum racing are missing longtime mainsail trimmer Warwick Fleury. Chris Hoskins stepped in for Warwick Fleury. He's stepping into probably the best mainsail trimmer in the world's shoes. You know, as we know, Warwick is the goat. And so after a season that maybe seems to have encountered mainly light to moderate winds, uh, Scarlino really delivers in every sense, building up to 25 knot breezes at times, averaging probably 20 knots, and there's lots of big waves for spectacular racing. Newcomers Vayu open with a win, but 2021's champion Sled streaked her run of form early on, leading in the early stages Murray Jones and Francesco Bruni, the Sled afterguard, working a particular magic. Keiko and Murray are really doing the magic. They just see things that other boats don't see, and both is fast. Mr. Kura is doing a great job downwind, so yes, all good. In the middle of the regatta, Platoon vindicate the changes with their best day of the season yet. It's just a, a matter to, to sail properly the boat. Nothing changed, it's still sailing. Still you need to pin the committee, pin the pin and choose one side. It's quite easy. And although sled lead into the final Saturday showdown, Quantum Racing prevail once again to win their third regatta of the season. That's a well-earned win and you, know, you have to give high marks to Doug and to the whole squad for it. So it's a good one knowing that I steered the boat for Charles and we got fourth and every regatta Doug has steered, we've won. So I think there's something to that DeVos guy. <laughs> we want to win the battle in Scarlino, but we also want to win the war. Sled takes second and Platoon sneak onto the podium. The 800 sailors and 46 maxes competing in week 2 of Les Voiles de Saint-Tropez managed to stay focused as they waited for the easterly wind to pick up, and when it did, the teams of Georges Corhal and the Société Nautique de Saint-Tropez immediately sprang into action to launch the day's race. l'acquisition d'un nouveau bateau assez, assez dément, un Wally 107, qui, euh, bah, qui nous a occupé une bonne petite partie de l'année et avec lequel on a le, le bonheur de naviguer pour les voiles de Saint-Tropez. 
Ouais, sur cet angle, c'est cinq gars dans le À 25 personnes, chacun a son rôle. Moi, c'est de faire avancer vite le bateau et d'exécuter les décisions que prend Laurent et j'essaie de les appliquer au mieux. Stop Globalement, quand on barre, on regarde essentiellement les compteurs. Et je suis concentré déjà sur le son des de retours des, des coéquipiers, de Stéphane qui règle la grand voile, d'Andréou qui, qui règle le foc ou euh, Pauline qui règle le spi. T'as l'écoute de l'équipage parce que euh, tout de suite ça peut être dangereux pour, pour les coéquipiers. Moi je suis assez épargné, mais quand je vois le travail qui est fourni à l'avant, si on chalute avec un spin de 1000 mètres carrés, les conséquences peuvent être euh, bah, dramatiques. Donc euh, on a vraiment mis des procédures en place pour préserver euh, l'ensemble des, des équipiers dans un premier temps et puis aller vite euh, dans un second temps. L'écoute elle est assez sur les sensations de gîte. C'est le capteur humain, mais euh, c'est un capteur qui va vraiment bien sentir un petit peu euh, voilà, là, j'ai tant de retours dans la barre, donc ça veut dire que le bateau est un peu bloqué, il faut libérer un peu de, de grand voile, ok, moins de retours dans la barre, le bateau revient un peu plus plat, ça accélère. Il y a, il y a, il y a toujours énormément de, de sensations pour faire avancer la machine, même si la, la part des données est vraiment plus importante que sur les petits bateaux. J'adore avoir euh, plusieurs types de bateaux, j'adore euh, différentes activités, hein, la flotte, le match reste, la course au large. Je trouve que c'est vraiment une des richesses euh, de notre sport que d'avoir autant d'outils euh, géniaux. Hein, euh, c'est vraiment ce qui fait euh, le côté passionnant de notre activité. Setting sail on a 20-mile, double-looped circuit around the Gulf. The stage was set for a grand finale day of racing on the last day of the M32 World Championship. It doesn't get better than this last week. Great week of racing. The conditions were challenging. All the other teams have gotten a lot better, so the competition is super tight. Six boats could have won the event. You know, coming down to the last race out of 19 races. It's a long slugfest. The results were up and down for all the boats, and you can't ask for anything more than that. The whole fleet is in agreement. This is some of the most exciting racing we've ever done. You know, super tight going into the day. Two points out of first, three points ahead of the next boat, and I think four points ahead of the boat behind that. It come down to not only the last race, but the last leg of the last race, which is unbelievable. On the verge of victory, and we got a penalty. Drop from first place back to third. The team did great. We sailed really fast. These are great conditions for us. Happy to have a third. Came up short one point, but uh, we're happy to be in the hunt. Coming down to the last leg of the last race was tremendous. They've only beat us by one point. So we're right in their back pocket. They know we're here. Taylor and the team did a great job, and you know we made it happen. You know, we knew we needed maybe just a little bit of luck to pull it off, and, uh, but also to sail really well. In few weeks, 138 solo sailors will set sail for an Atlantic crossing between San Malo and Point Apita that they have been dreaming of for months, some for years. The race is against the elements and race for time. La Route du Rum Destination Guadeloupe will crown the fastest in each category.
un souvenir incroyable. Pas du fait que j'ai été premier, du fait de cette lutte mano à mano avec François. Quand on part début novembre, on part souvent dans l'inconnu météo. C'est une course qui est très forte à ce niveau-là. C'est quand même 15 tonnes de bateaux qui s'élèvent au-dessus de l'eau et malgré l'état de la mer, ça rend le truc tout à fait fascinant. Winner of the TF35 Trophy overall is Ernesto Bertarella's Alinghi Red Bull Racing, whose victories at the Swiss events in Mias and at the Geneve Roll Geneve, followed by a second place last month in Malsasi, Northern Italy, gave them the points gap needed to win the 2022 season with an event to spare. For our real team, uh, we had uh, the goal to, to win a second time the TF35 trophy. It was a hard one because Alinghi wanted to beat us for sure. And they did it uh, very well, so it was a great battle with them all the year. We're happy to, to win this, uh, this season. What's very uh, exciting is the strength of the whole fleet with uh, Spin Drift in particular coming back very strong at the end of the season. So I think next year is going to be a challenge. We had a lot of fun uh, this season. Uh, we ended up very well, very strong, with the first place in Malcesin and the second place here in Scarlino. And uh, I'm really happy in the way we sailed. The salt has dried enough to get Emirates team New Zealand's land yacht, Horonuku, back out on the lake for another round of testing. The team managed to get four runs squeezed into the afternoon in a breeze of 15 to 18 knots, which was good enough to clock 156 kilometres per hour. Every little day, every little learning is a great experience. I mean, we haven't pushed the speeds much over 150 kilometres an hour with this craft yet, so hopefully over the next few days we'll get that opportunity with the weather. The surface has really dried out quite a lot in the last two or three days. We've done a couple of tyre changes, a couple of configuration changes, and the plan for today is to basically sort of step up the speed and just seeing how the grip is on the surface so uh, another great step forwards with our program. Taking power on now, oh, little drift there, having to hold a little bit of right hand down so I feel like I've got lots of grip at the back here. Still max power on the wing here. Slow bear away from here in a second. Okay. 154 slowing down. The changes we made to the to the tyres and the grips been absolutely incredible, the difference to the craft, so some huge lessons there. Unfortunately the breeze didn't quite blow as much as we were hoping today, but um, we still managed to sort of clock 156 kilometres an hour. Um, that's the fastest run we've done to date, so um, plenty more in the tank, um, just need a bit more breeze. So uh, we'll keep chipping away, but the guys have done a great job and looking forward to getting it back and having a great debrief tonight on how we make the further gains from here. Yeah, it's kind of ready to get some breeze. Like you just feel like you just feel the power. Yeah. I think we might need to do a tail plane change.